Hi there, this is Chris from Moto Legends, the chap in the cap, here today to talk to you about a new glove from Finnish brand Rucker. It's called the Stancer glove. So this is the new for 2020 Stancer glove from Rucker. Now it replaces a glove that's been in the range for as long as I can remember called the Argosaurus glove. We never really featured the Argosaurus glove. It's a, it was a very sporty glove. We're not really a sports oriented company. It had a great big metal plate on the back. It just looked a little bit blingy for, for us. We didn't think it was particularly suitable for the kind of touring and commuting customers with whom we uh, deal. This glove, what's strange is this glove is pretty much the same glove in terms of its spec, but it just looks a little bit more appropriate. It's got to be said that it's still a little bit of a mix between um, sports and touring. So this is, I suppose, you would call it a sports touring glove, but I think it's going to look far more acceptable on a GS or some kind of sit-up bike than the Argosaurus did. It is pretty much an in, entirely a leather glove. There's a couple of bits of stretch here and there. There's a bit here, which is nice. When you get a big knuckle protector like this, we like to find something behind it that enables the hand to articulate because with a big knuckle protector, that can make a glove stiff, but we need an accordion panel. We need an open back here or some kind of stretch material that makes it easier to put your hands around the grips. And that's exactly what this, this does. As I, as I close the hand, that panel stretches. So that's a nice little touch, but that is pretty much the only piece of textile on the glove. It is very much a leather glove. It is also a Gore-Tex glove, and it's a Gore-Tex Gore Grip glove. What that means is that the membrane is bonded to the leather. Now, those of you who know your gear will know the difference between a drop liner membrane and a, a laminated membrane. A laminated membrane is stuck onto the inside or heat sealed onto the inside of, 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 the, of a garment, in this case, obviously a glove. It means that the water cannot enter the glove. Now, in a drop liner glove, water can seep in through the outer fabric. It will be stopped by the membrane from reaching the hand, but in heavy rain, a glove like that can become soaking wet. Um, it can make you feel cold as you're riding along at 70 miles an hour. It can also mean that it takes ages for that glove to dry out. So this has a, um, a gore grip membrane couple of issues with with gore grip membranes or one in particular um, they are they give you a much better feel on the on the controls because the membrane there's no air gap there it gives you a lot of sensitivity on the on the fingertips so if you're someone who rides fairly quickly if you like to be very nimble on the on the bars then a gore grip glove if you want a winter glove a gore grip glove is a nicer glove to wear the downside with a with a laminated membrane is that because you don't have the, the air gap, it can make your fingers a little bit cold. So a glove like this, if you're gonna be riding on a colder day, it's gonna be better if you've got heated grips. The membrane inside, or sorry, the liner inside is also bonded or stuck to the inner side of the leather. Now, I'm not saying you will never be able to pull this liner out, but you're gonna to have to work fairly hard at it. But over time, that could well happen. If you've got a glove that's a little bit tight, if your hand's really hot and you're overfilling the glove, you could eventually pull the liner out. I'm going to just explain something that I'm now gonna explain whenever I do a review of gloves, because a lot of people come in to the shop, they bring a pair of gloves in and they go, the liners come out. Liners do not come out of gloves. We have lots and lots on the wall here in the shop. Every morning I come in and the liner hasn't come out of any of them. Liners come out of gloves when you pull the liners out, and that is not technically a warranty issue. You have to look after the glove. You have to take the glove off in a particular way. If you do it the right way, a liner will not come out. You get your hand over the four fingers, and then you just ease your glove, your hand out. If you do that, you will never pull a liner out of a glove. It's a real pain when a liner comes out. Glove never feels right after that. You end up having to carry a pen with you or something to push the fingers in all the time. It's not nice. If you take a little bit of care and always pull the gloves off correctly, you will never have that issue. Anyway, let me talk through the spec of the glove because this is a, um, a furiously well a detailed and specced glove and there's quite a few things that I need to talk you through. 
Having said that this is less blingy, less racy than the Argosaurus glove that preceded it, it's still quite an aggressive knuckle here. Um, so if you want something that's a little bit more subtle, this isn't perhaps the glove for you, but it's certainly a very protective glove. The protectors here have got some air vents in, so it's gonna make this glove a little bit cooler if you are riding in hotter weather, if you are kind of pushing on and your hands are getting a little bit, bit sweaty. Nice little mesh panel here as well. Down the fingers we have, on the minor knuckles, we've got some rubber protectors here and on the bottoms of the fingers here, we've got the same thing. You've got accordion stretch panels here, which we like in a glove, especially when you've got a glove with a big knuckle protector, as I've mentioned already, it can be a little bit stiff. These accordion panels just mean that when you put your hands around the bars, it opens up. It just makes the glove a lot more comfortable. You've got here, a banding, I think this is now called the Bayliss strap. Troy Bayliss um, famously pulled his finger back. I think he then had his finger cut off because he didn't want to miss out on, on the next race. But this band here that pulls these, that keeps these two fingers together mean that the little finger, it was going to be very difficult to pull that back. Um, fingers here, this finger is touchscreen sensitive. In this particular glove, I do not know why, because on most of the new gloves for 2020, they have a touchscreen sensitive finger and thumb, but for some reason, the design of this glove did not allow that to happen. You have a touchscreen sensitive finger only. Now, that's fine with a sat nav, but if you're using an iPhone and want to be able to, to, to take a map and move it apart, you cannot do that with this glove. Nice little detail. Um, this has externally sewn seams. I sometimes think that these seams don't look as nice, they don't look as slick, but when you take the seam and you sew it externally, it makes the glove a little bit more comfortable. And certainly this is a lovely glove to wear. It's a really a comfortable glove. Um, if I turn the glove over, great big piece of leather runs down the palm and down the side of the hand. So if you find yourself sliding down the road, you've got an extra layer there. You have a palm slider here. Palm slider is really important. When we go down, if we've got a second to think about it, the initial reaction, the instant reaction is to put your hands out. If, you, if your hand goes out on the road and it's a tarmac road and it's pretty much, well, it's often going, going to be, that can cause your hand, if you're moving at speed, it can cause your hand to stick and it throws your arm out behind you. So a slider is meant to hit the road as it sounds and to slide on the road. So that's a nice robust slider there. You've also got a bit of a, um, a soft cushion here over the scaphoid. You've got other little button protectors here on the outside of the thumb. Um, you've got a visor wipe here. The um, Argosaurus had one, but it was not as soft as this. It was not as, as good as this. So that's a better visor wipe. In terms of the wrist, it's a longer cuffed glove. Now, that might've been designed initially for racing, for going over leathers, but this is gonna go nicely under any textile outer. A cuff like this will these days go underneath a jacket. It's nice and thin, so it'll do that easily. You've got two Velcro adjusters, one on the cuff and one on the wrist. So this is a glove that is not going anywhere. So this is one heck of a glove. There's everything you could ever want on a glove. Rucker have thrown all their technology at this glove. Obviously, it's not a winter glove, but for three season riding, any time from kind of April through to November, this is going to be as nice a glove as you could ever find. It is, however, a furiously expensive glove. Rucker gloves are not inexpensive. And if you buy into Rucker, you will know that the brand has a fantastic reputation. They use the best components. They sew everything together really well. They make the best of the best, but they expect you to pay for it. And at 250 pounds, you know, that's just a lot of money. Um, I can't really justify the price. I don't have a glove of this ilk that is in that price brand. Um, there is a glove from Klim, which is the adventure glove, which is far more adventure oriented as it sounds. It's not a sports glove. This is a bit more sport sporting, obviously. That's a 185. I have a glove from Stadler that's a summer waterproof glove. Beautiful glove, a glove to wear, goat skin palm. That's 175 pounds. So it's difficult on a value for money basis to justify this glove, but 
I suppose that's always the case with Rucker. You're just buying into a brand that's expensive that you know that you can always rely on. You also have to factor in the fact that you get a two-year warranty with a Rucker glove. You don't get that with all gloves. And in any other glove, if you've got something that falls off, if the membrane starts to leak after 18 months, then you're in for a new pair of gloves. You are at least guaranteed two years use out of this glove. Hopefully at this price, you'll get many more years as well. So that's it. Um, it's an amazing glove. It's an expensive glove, but it's Rucker. You probably didn't expect anything else. So that was the Stancer glove from Rucker. If you would like to see our entire range of gloves, and obviously we have hundreds of pairs of gloves on our website, then visit the website motolegends.com. If, however, you are particularly taken with this glove, you can go directly to the relevant page on the website. There's a button top right there. There you can check out the details, the sizes, the spec in a bit more detail. And obviously, if you are particularly taken, you can buy it there and then. Now, when you buy from us on the internet or via mail order, we try to make the process as simple, stress-free, and reassuring as we possibly can. So there's no P&P charge on any item you buy from us, on any protective item that you buy from us. Similarly, if once you receive your goods, you've decided that they're not what you thought they were, you don't like them, they don't fit, whatever your reason, you can return it to us again at our charge. And we give you a full 12 months in which to do that. Now, we're not expecting you to take a pair of gloves, ride around in them for six or nine months, then send them back and say, nah, I've changed my mind, I don't really like them. All we're trying to do is take the pressure off. There's no rush to get them back to us. The final part of our proposition is what we call a 10% price guarantee. Now, John Lewis are very famous for their never knowingly undersold promise. We go one stage better. Basically, if anyone undercuts us on price, we will beat their price by 10%. So let's say we have a pair of gloves for 200 pounds. If you find someone selling that glove for 180 pounds, we will sell that glove to you for 162 pounds. And we will, you can do that, you can affect the price promise before you make your purchase, or you can do it up to a fortnight after you've bought from us. There are a few terms and conditions on the website, nothing onerous, but it probably makes sense to have a look at those before you actually try to make a price guarantee happen. We do, by the way, not price beat companies that are in Europe. We will price match a company in Europe, including their, their P&P. Anyway, if you would like to receive in future our bulletins about new products, then go to the front page of the website there is a piece of script at the top called Newsletter Sign Up. If you click on there, seconds later you'll be signed up. You'll receive all of our email bulletins in the future. If, by contrast, you would prefer to receive information about new products that videographically, in other words, in this form, then we would be delighted if you wanted to become a subscriber. You can do that by clicking on the button below right. One final point I want to make is that we are not just an internet company. We are also a shop. Now, our shop has a fairly small footprint. It's a really funky shop. It's a fun shop. But next to the shop, attached to the shop, is a three-floor warehouse with over £2 million worth of merchandise, which makes us technically the second largest shop in the UK. So not a lot on display in, in the shop itself, but we just run and fetch things. We have an enormous amount of stock here. So if there's a pair of gloves or boots or jacket or whatever that you're looking for, you stand a better chance of finding the style you want in the size you want here than almost anywhere else in the UK. Anyway, this has been Chris at Moto Legends. I hope to talk to you again soon.